This is an overview of an article entitled Drugability of Coronary Artery Disease Risk Loci, published in the August 2018 issue of Circulation, Genomic, and Precision Medicine. Coronary artery disease, or CAD, is a major cause of death worldwide with an estimated 8.5 million cases of myocardial infarction, or MI, each year. Current therapeutics for prevention of CAD are based mainly on the control of traditional risk factors. There's a large discrepancy between clinical needs and the number of available agents, largely explained by a high attrition in drug development. Genetic strategies may provide a novel approach to support drug development. Genome-wide association studies, or GWASs, have identified numerous loci that appear to contribute to genetic susceptibility of CAD and MI, thus offering the opportunity to incorporate currently existing genetic information to improve management of CAD and MI. Drug repurposing aims to evaluate whether an existing drug is suitable for treating a new medical condition other than the one for which the drug was originally developed. It's a potentially advantageous approach as few clinical trials are needed to establish an alternative clinical indication for the existing drug, since safety has already been demonstrated. Drugability refers to the ability to develop a molecule to target a gene product by assessing the structural information available for the relevant protein. In the paper under discussion, the authors hypothesized that they could utilize genetic information and pharmacological data to facilitate drug development for CAD and MI. Using numerous sources of information made publicly available in the past few years, the authors developed two pipelines. The first pipeline aimed to identify approved drugs that might be suitable for repurposing for treatment of CAD and MI, while the second pipeline was used to assess the drugability of gene products and rank non-targeted genes for their suitability to be targets for the development of new drugs. This is a fluxogram of the pipelines developed in this study. The first pipeline can predict relevant side or discordant effects of targeting CAD and MI loci, identify drug gene interactions using DGIDB, and filter the most suitable candidates for repurposing among existing drugs in the market. The second pipeline assesses the drugability of the non-targeted loci associated with CAD and determines the safety of targeting these gene products similar to the first pipeline, to suggest novel targets for drug development. The authors used the first pipeline and identified three drug compounds with potential for drug repurposing. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, Ryokiguat, and pentolinium. ATP currently available in Europe for the treatment of low back pain, targets the ACCS2 gene and has important roles in regulating cardiac function, muscle contractility, and blood circulation, which might be beneficial for the treatment of CAD and MI. Riokiguat is a positive allosteric modulator of the GUCY1A3 gene product. Its original indications were for pulmonary arterial hypertension and chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension treatment. But it might potentially serve as an antianginal agent. Pentolinium, an antagonist of the CHRNB4 gene product, has been used for the treatment of malignant hypertension, but might also be useful in the management of CAD. Using the second pipeline, the authors calculated the drugability score for each gene product related to CAD and MI susceptibility, but not targeted by existing drugs. Using the drugability scores, the number of concordant and discordant directions of effect, and information on tissue-specific expression obtained from the protein atlas, they identified the three most suitable candidate genes for drug development, LMOD1, 
HIP1 and PPP2R3A. Although the use of pipelines developed in this study might appear promising, there are some limitations, as pointed out by the authors. This approach relies on well-informed yet unproven relationships between CAD or MI loci and nearby genes and the druggability of their gene products. It's also not clear whether estimated drug-gene interactions are actually beneficial. In conclusion, the evidence presented in the study for repurposing of drugs and identification of candidates for drug development suggests that it might be useful to utilize existing databases and conduct in silico analyses to apply this knowledge. The results of this work, however, would ultimately need to be validated, and thus clinical trials would need to be conducted in order to evaluate the potential clinical use of these agents for CAD and MI. Finally, it's worth noting that the pipelines developed in this work are modular and could readily be applied to other diseases.